This lecture is on the new chart, the TKM sympathetic nervous system chart, which deals with sympathetic and parasympathetic. So it's the autonomic nervous system. And what I've done for those online is you have a PDF to look at that gives you these that, again, last night I put together some things. And those that are sitting, you have something there as well. I may skip over this. I may add to it. There's no telling what I may do. So let's cover this right here first. This is what we're talking about. And yes, there are some people that don't know what an autonomic nervous system is and that it has compartments within it. The main ones are sympathetic and parasympathetic, which are opposites. And then what we're doing is showing the major correlations to these and then giving you a way through a TKM perspective that you can easily help them. So let's start with that. The basics of the nervous system. The nervous system, a network of nerve cells and fibers that transmits nerve impulses between parts of the body. The system in the human body made up of the brain, which is the core, and the spinal cord is the main distributor of the nerves. There's branches, there's ganglia, and there's parts of the receptor organs that receives and interprets stimuli and transmit impulses to the effector organs. The central nervous system. That's the part of the nervous system which invertebrates consist of the brain and spinal cord to which sensory impulses are transmitted and from which motor impulses pass out. So it's communication back and forth. And which coordinates the activity of the entire nervous system. The peripheral nervous system. The part of the nervous system that is outside of the central nervous system and comprises of the cranial nerves, excepting the optic nerve, the spinal nerves, and the autonomic nervous system. Then we come to the autonomic nervous system, which is the main part of the chart. The part of the nervous system responsible for control of the bodily functions, not consciously directed, such as breathing and heartbeat and digestive process. These are things that go on while you're asleep. They go on all the time. A part of the nervous system that regulates key and voluntary functions of the body, including the activity of the heart muscle, the smooth muscles, including the muscles of the intestinal tract and the glands. The autonomic nervous system has two divisions, sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic. The sympathetic, which accelerates the heart, constricts blood vessels and raises blood pressure. And the parasympathetic, which slows the heart, increases intestinal and gland activity and relaxes sphincter muscles. So some definitions are in the next part for what you may not understand at the top. And you'll find some things that are on the chart that you may or may not understand. There is a simple solution these days. I think they call it Google. <laughs> so you can look those up and get a better understanding. The structure of the autonomic nervous system this system is further divided into three branches, the sympathetic system, the parasympathetic, and the enteric nervous system. The sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system regulates fight or flight responses. This division also performs such tasks as relaxing the bladder, speeding up heart rate, and dilating eye pupils. It's only listing a few to give an example. The parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system helps maintain normal body functions and conserves physical resources. This division also performs such tasks as controlling the bladder, slowing down heart rate, and constricting eye pupils. The autonomic nervous system is also made up of a third component known as the enteric nervous system, or intrinsic nervous system is one of the main divisions of the autonomic nervous system and consists of a mesh-like system of neurons that governs the function of the gast gastrointestinal tract. The autonomic nervous system operates by receiving information from the environment and from other parts of the body. The sympathetic and parasympathetic system tend to have opposing actions in which one system will stimulate a response where the other will inhibit it. So the purpose is to create a balance and in health for all the different situations. Traditionally, stimulation has been thought to take place through the sympathetic system, while inhibition is 
was thought to occur via the parasympathetic. However, many expectations to this have been found. Today, the sympathetic system is viewed as a quickly responding system that mobilizes the body for action, where the parasympathetic is believed to act more slowly to dampen responses. For example, the sympathetic nervous system will act to raise blood pressure, while the parasympathetic will act to lower it. Two, the two systems work in conjunction to manage the body's responses depending on the stimulation and need. If, for example, you are facing a threat and need to flee, the sympathetic will quickly mobilize your body to take action. Once the threat is passed, the parasympathetic will then start to dampen these responses, slowly returning your body to its normal resting state. Studies have shown that prayer shifts a person from sympathetic dominant to parasympathetic dominant. Studies have also shown that eating will accomplish a similar thing. Don't you kind of feel that way? You can be tired, exhausted, anxious, and you just have something good to eat, and it's, ah. So it's not just getting your food. You're also affecting your autonomic nervous system. And a lot of times during prayer, what you're doing is you're getting your eyes off of the situation and onto the higher good. What does the autonomic nervous system do? The autonomic nervous system controls a variety of internal processes, including digestion, blood pressure, heart rate, urination, pulpillary response, respiration, sexual response, body temperature, and the list goes down because we both have those. The autonomic nerve pathways connect different organs to the brain stem or spinal cord. Problems with the autonomic. A number of disorders and other causes lead to disruption in the autonomic system. A few of these include Parkinson's, peripheral neuropathy, aging, spinal cord disorders, and drug use. Symptoms of autonomic disorder can include dizziness, lightheadedness upon standing, erectile dysfunction, lack of sweat. For women, that would be glow. <laughs> Urinary incontinence and difficulty emptying the bladder. Have you noticed that people, and uh, some of these tend to be also age-related, that become far more common because of a system that's been neglected? Diagnosis of an autonomic disorder requires a doctor's evaluation, which may include a physical examination, recording blood pressure when the patient is both lying down and standing, and testing of sweat response, an electrocardiogram. May I also say that, have you ever heard the phrase when you go to a doctor and they check you out and they find things and they say, well, according to your age, have you ever heard that response? Yes. <laughs> so that's going by standard studies and statistics according to age. But I will say that it's not according to how it should be. So when you take the averages and studies of what happens to society normally, under normal conditions, you arise to these conclusions. But when you're actually taking care of your system and doing that rare thing called preventative medicine, it gives you a total different category in statistics. The autonomic nervous system plays an important role in the human body, controlling many of the body's autonomic responses and processes. This system also helps prepare the body to cope with stress and threats, as well as returning the body to a resting state afterwards. Learning more about this part of the nervous system can give you a better understanding of the processes that underlie many human behaviors and responses. So I wanted to give you some example here. First off, uh, let's go back to looking at the chart for a moment. So this is two sides, and it's giving you main correlations. It is not giving you all correlations. You can't put that on a chart. I'll give you a little example of that in a moment. But what it also includes on this side where it says sympathetic, a little area here that has digits related to vertebra. And as you can see by the charts, what they relate to in the autonomic nervous system, which means 
One more approach is you can hold the digit related to the vertebra, related to the system, to help it. That was complicated, wasn't it? OK. Now I'm going to reiterate that in a minute. When holding the thumb, it directly helps the following vertebra. C1, that's cervical. T1, that's thoracic. T7, L1, that's lumbar. And S1, that's sacral. And it goes, if you'll follow this pattern, watch the pattern. The index finger helps C2, T2, T8, L2, S2. Do you see a pattern already? The thumb helps the ones that are 1, except in the thoracic you've got 12. So it's helping 1 and 7. And the same for the index finger, except in the thoracic, which is 2 and 8, and so on. So you, you figure what it is for the middle finger, right? And then the ring, and then the little. Yes? Does it matter which hand, left or right? And if we did it on the one hand, and then we did it on the other one, would that uh, reinforce it? Yes. OK. So yes and no to the first question, and yes to the last question. So the first question, does it matter? Well, you're going to get it to, you're going to help it either side that you work. But here's a basic rule of thumb. <laughs> so the basic rule of thumb is that if you have a symptom or problem on one side of the body, hold the digit on that same side. That covers the majority of things. There are some contradictions to that. But I'll, I'll help you to be comfortable with that with the following statement, which is, when you work one side, you're helping both. You just help one side directly, and you help the other side secondary. Therefore, when it comes to your second question, alternating back and forth, it just helps give more support. So what if you have a situation and you're not sure if it is on your right side or left side? Hold both. Hold one side and then left. Let me add to that. In the energy system, it circulates left side first. Basic TKM knowledge. That's why we say in an area, a gray area that you don't know, if you always work left, you'll always be right. Because left is first energy and has a more powerful stimulating for both sides of the body than if you were just to work right. Let me give you another physiological example. Uh, breast cancer. With breast cancer, whether it is the left or right breast, you'll find that what we call the 26, which governs the lymphatic flow. Now, the dumping of the lymphatic flow, of course, you have lymph nodes under the arm. You have a dump site here and dump site here that are main. But we're talking the energy aspect that controls those areas. So that's the 26, a little behind the auxilla under here. The 26 on the left side will always have more edema and usually some tenderness whether the tumor is on the left or right side. It's always going to reflect more on more edema on the left. Was that too much or did you follow that? Therefore, whether it's uh, to follow through with that left or right breast cancer, tumor uh, cancerous or benign, it's always vital to get that left open and functioning good and keep it open and functioning good. And if you understand that, then that also leads you to understand that if you do that before you get anything, you're much less likely to get anything. One of the main reasons, other than the emotional things that go on for breast cancer, and there's many sources for causing that, is toxic area plain toxic area. And a lot of that is due to bra. Bra is pressing and constricting, which inhibits your lymphatic flow from cleaning the area. Then you have the energy side, which have you ever seen a 100% cotton bra? Then it couldn't have any elastic to it. So you have blends and synthetics that bras are made out of, and that inhibits the energy flow, which then further makes it toxic, toxic terrain. Then some will even have a metal underwire, 
which greatly inhibits the energy flow, kind of shorting it out, and presses so much more, all the more inhibiting the lymphatic flow. So sooner or later, you get enough toxins built up and you get problems. Just thought I'd touch on that while we're there. Um, there is a difference in following that thumb to index to middle to ring. And that is the center of the palm and the back of the hand. The center of the palm directly relates to cervical six. And here's, you know, when, when I would think of center of the palm, I think center of the palm. Actually, the center of the palm in this correlation is a little bit below that. Just a fraction below that. And then it says back of the hand. For the back of the hand, it's the same way. You could go center, and here you're within that three inch diameter for sure. And same thing here, it can go a little closer to the wrist. Now these are ascending and descending correlations that we talk about in other charts and in classes. But here it gives you the correlation for instance, the center of the palm to cervical 6 and the back of the hand to cervical 7 and T12. Therefore, holding the thumb helps via the connection to the vertebra. The Vivian, then I want to say Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> that relates to the uh, internal carotid artery, the maxillary nerve, the cavernous plexus, and the carotid plexus, 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 maybe water. I want to give a little example of how intricate this can get and how if we really start expanding on it, we'll be here for a long time and we would need a book instead of a chart. So the nerve is composed of the union of the postsynoptic parasympathetic fibers and the presynoptic sympathetic fibers. And then it explains the theory behind that. And then it also explains about the maxillary nerve. But what I want to show you is how you can see it in another way. So that particular nerve, the vidian, if you're looking at the surface and skin and part of the face correlation, it's the middle one. On this one, it would be the blue area. And this is giving you a different correlation of some of the things correlated, not all the details. To show you another view of that same thing, because that's strictly side, this is one that's a little more of an angle. So you're seeing a broader effect through that part of the face. And as it says there, this is part of the trigeminal nerve, one of the branches of it. Uh, trigeminal, three branches, facial nerve, five branches, which sometimes have been confused, saying the trigeminal and the facial nerve is the same thing. Well, the trigeminal has three, the facial nerve has five branches. So this middle one here is dealing with this particular nerve. I just wanted to put this part up here, even though you can't read it, that gives you a little more detail of what's going on in that very same section. So does it get a little complex? Yes, but you know what? It can be as simple as holding a digit. Do you have to know all these things? No. Do you have to connect all the dots? No. You look at the chart, you see an issue or a problem related to these things connected, and look at the digit related and hold it. So please, I invite you to easily research what you're not familiar with in the terms or locations related. Thank you for understanding that. Uh, and it gives you additional help down below. And then I want to say, let me explain it this way. There are 144,000 energetic functions extending from and related to the spine. So you've heard me say many times, there's 144,000 energetic functions. But they are correlated from the spine. So everything that we know in TKM Guess where that study began? The root of that study? The spine. So there are things that change, but if you're born 
and you have the vertebrae that you're supposed to and the bones that you're supposed to, there are 33 from your top of the cervical down to the apex of the coccyx. There are 144,000 biochemical reactions in the body. That's the exact same number, but we're talking biochemistry there, that have a core relation to the spine as well. The five digits on each hand relate to the vertebra, as explained, and to each of the 144,000 functions. We are demonstrating with this chart how the digits and vertebrae correlate to the major part of the autonomic nervous system. Also shown is how you can help these functions in simple form. Although there is much more thorough ways to accomplish it with TKM full applications, these suggestions are not to be underestimated. I think a powerful example of that is the emergency EMTs. Oh, should we take time for a commercial? EMTs. <laughs> so it is fully released now. There is a free app for your Android or your iPhone. If you go to uh, the website, it is TKMAPP, so TKMAPP.com. On there, you'll find a download for Androids, and you'll find a download for your iOS systems. So speaking of EMTs, let me explain a correlation here. Most of the EMT procedures are single step methods that involve a digit on a hand and a vertebra on a spine. Hmm. Maybe there's something to this, which produces consistent fruit for things like stopping a heart attack in progress, consistent, done by cardiologists aside from tons of lay people, but cardiologists in emergency rooms where they've applied a full court press and they see no change and then apply the method and because they're already hooked to the monitors, they see the instantaneous results. Instantaneous uh, doesn't mean a half second. Instantaneous means it usually is an average of two minutes before it's resolved. So when they apply it, upon contact, you can start seeing the difference in the monitors. The person will start feeling a difference in their pain levels, but it takes an average of two minutes for it to get regulated and stop. And it is not, just to give the disclaimer there, it is not corrective. It's for the emergency episode to stop a heart attack. It doesn't address the cause. There are other things we have that will address the cause once the cause is found. But that step is very consistent in stopping it, which nothing else known, whether man-made, natural, can accomplish. And yes, I have been in a lot of, I remember in uh, university in Manila that I was lecturing, talking about this, and they had some professors and other people there, and there were actually people from the US that was there. I don't want to drop any names, you'd probably recognize them. And he said, well, there is another thing. And probably a lot of you have already heard of this, cayenne pepper. Now, they say, how would you like to have a mouthful of cayenne pepper right now? <laughs> but they say that if you're having a heart attack, that it will not burn you. Well, I don't know that by personal experience. I'm just repeating this. So, you know, I have also been lecturing in, uh, in Cleveland to a room full of doctors, and a doctor called me just where I spoke and said, come out here, this lady's having a heart attack, because he knew about the TKM. And I went out there and applied the step, and it didn't work. And I assessed her a little bit while I was applying it, and I'm saying, this looks like an anxiety attack. So I applied the step for an anxiety attack, and it stopped. So how about this? What if you're having an anxiety attack, and you stick a mouthful of cayenne? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. So forget I asked the guy the that, excuse me? I guess you forget about the anxiety. <laughs> Absolutely. You'd have a very different one. <laughs> so I asked the man that said that, I said, well, do you have any on you? And he said, no. So I said, I'm glad I'm not having a heart attack. So with this, all you need is the knowledge. And I have never heard of any resource talking about the cayenne that talks about the consistency 
that you can get with using it. It means that it has worked at times. Plus, stopping seizures, stopping asthma attacks, anaphylactic shock, and other emergency episodes profoundly and consistently. The body is created to always work for your good, except when it is dysfunctional in its communication within. When proper help is applied, the communication improves and resolves. Then the health restoration will occur more rapidly. Please know that most of the autonomic nervous system functions are to create a balance for health. Plus, is able to excel quickly when there is a particular need, like in emergencies. Let's look at another angle, such as all health is related to the nervous system. What do you mean? So we're not just talking about a problem with the nervous system. Let's talk about other problems. The core of the nervous system, central nervous system, is the brain. And the gut is secondary. Now, medically, this is what they call the brain and the second brain. My terminology is I call this the brain and this is the mind because of the role that they play. Every possible function in the body is tied into and dependent on the proper functioning of the central nervous system, and the core is the brain. This applies to the autonomic nervous system as well, and the immune system, organs, glands, and so on. So medical science, although understanding that everything in the body is interconnected, for instance, these things that I'm showing you is due to medical science, OK? Uh, connected physiologically, that particular health science resource does not treat the body as a whole. Furthermore, the emotional and spiritual components that are separate but always intertwined with everything that makes up a human being is not usually acknowledged. Concerning this chart, in brief, the chart provides the major correlations that can be expounded on and guides to simple procedures to help them, such as Concerning some technical difficulties, we had to insert this, such as, number one, holding the digit or finger related, especially for the same side of the body aid. You can be more encompassing if alternating when holding left or right digits or fingers. Now what I suggest is when you do these, is hold the entire digit. You get three sections, you got sides, top and bottom. So just encompass the whole thing. You don't have to squeeze it. Just comfortably hold it. That applies to any of them. There is a second option. You can hold the digit and the vertebrae related. It is shown to be more effective to hold the vertebra with the right fingers and the digit with the left hand. That's if you're holding this on somebody else. If you're doing it yourself, you can't reach a lot of the vertebrae. If you can, then hold it with your right hand and then do what we call loop. That would be nail to pad. This would be pad to pad, nail to pad. Kind of like you're thumping, but no pressure. If you're just doing it by yourself, I suggest you just hold the fingers. But I'm just naming the options in case there is someone else to work on you. Although, understand that even though the right hand goes to the spine and the left goes to the digits, no harm will happen if reversed in relation to this chart. Number three, you can also include TKM applications that can help the digit related and spinal correlations. Now that takes a little more study in the levels one, two, three, and four. If you're not there, just utilize the first two options. And the easiest, just like it says on the chart, is just singly hold the digit related. Thank you. If you have any questions, contact us.